the meantime, we can just gather some of this hair again. And send it down the chute to the hoover. Hi, my name's Lucky Tyndall, and this is Alfie the Laza Poo. Today we're going to be grooming him in a little teddy bear salon trim. Um, we're going to be showing sort of angulation, how to shorten a dog. Uh, this suit, this cup will suit most breeds, Shih Tzus, Lazas, or any sort of crosses in between. Right, Alfie's had a bath and a blow dry now. He's all not entangle free, hopefully. Uh, we're going to move on to the prep work, do his nails, um, check his pads and do the groin area. So I'm going to start off with doing his pads. I've got the Arcos set onto a 30 blade. <clears throat> when doing pads, always make sure you support the dog around the thigh area. Don't just hold the bottom of the foot because if they pull, they can cause themselves damage. And also remember, the leg has to go in the position it would naturally. So if you think outwards, forwards, never out to the side because you can pop pop the hip. So I'm going to. Get him comfortable, and then clip out all the hair from his pads. Be careful when you're going into the pad, gently scoop out, don't dig in because you can graze the skin. There we go, nice neat foot, and I'll continue with the rest of them as well. I'm going to go on to doing his groin now. I'm going to change his setting to a 15. 10 or 15 on a pet dog and you just gently skim. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, the biggest complaint most groomers get from their clients is clipper rash. Um, it's usually basically the stubble growing back around the sensitive areas and the dogs just chew and lick at it constantly. If you do happen to catch them accidentally, something like aloe vera gel to soothe the area works perfectly. Um, because he's quite a low squat dog, I'm not going to lift his legs up out the sides. I'm going to lift him up by the front legs and get him standing comfortably. Good boy. Good lad. He's previously had his tummy shaved out for the bad weather, but hasn't had his groin done for a while for the purpose of the film. And if you see, I'm gently just feather light, just barely touching the skin. With females and entire dogs around the genital area, if you never go into the scrotum or the vulva, always work your way out, so go in and out. Alfie's been neutered, so there's not much of a worry. Good lad, good boy. Now all the prep's been done, I'm going to go on to clipping Alfie. Um, I'm going to be using a 30 blade and I'm going to be using a peach comb attachment which is half an inch 13 millimeters. Now a lot of people complain about breaking teeth on clippers. Nine times out of ten it happens when you've got the clippers running and you're taking the comb attachment on and off. So always make sure the clippers are turned off. Good lad. Come back here a minute. Right, another little tip is a little bit of conditioning spray just before you comb attach. It'll allow the comb attachment to go through the coat a lot easier, glide through without snagging. Obviously it goes without saying the coat must be well prepared in the first place. You should be able to get a comb through it quite easily. There we go. Now the basic pattern I'm going to start off with Alfie is Chanel's a type style. I'm not going to go too low on the hock, so I want to build a bit of angulation. Um, he's a little bit heavy and he's quite long in the body, so I want to try and shorten him up and give him longer legs. Always say the occipital point 
the back of the skull, two fingers width, and then work your way down there, because you can always blend that in afterwards with scissors. Take it too high up, and you, what we call in the trade, you get a helmet head where you've got a, a flat area here, which is difficult to blend in afterwards. So when I teach clipping, I always say to people, don't run the clippers all the way down one length. It's like a queue, queue of people trying to rush through a small door. They're not gonna get through. Whereas if you gently do two or three inches at a time, you can see the coat fall away quite easy and it doesn't clog the comb attachments up either. I'm not gonna leave the skirt on him. I'm gonna taper it all the way under. He's short enough as it is, so putting your skirt on these guys does make them look a lot shorter than they, they appear. And just avoid the elbow. You want to just go behind it and scoop that hair out. behind the ear. Careful you don't catch the ear. Always have it held out the way. And I'm stopping just above and then just gently skim away. And I'm coming down the neck and where the leg starts I just want to gently skim into it to give that illusion of a longer leg. So I'll come round up to the point and then into the leg a little bit. Good luck. Healthy. Good point. Then come to the base of the tail. Underneath the towel, into a schnauzer style print. Being a crossbreed is not breed standard, but we can always add a little bit of wow factor to these cute little crosses by putting shape and angulation into them. Good lad. And I'm just gently sliding away, skimming away from the leg. So I can scissor that in afterwards. You just want to blend it in. You don't want to separate it from the clipper area to the scissored area. As much as you can do with your clippers for a, a salon trim because it's all about saving time. Good luck. I'm going to continue the same on the other side. I'm going to move on to the neck and throat area. Just check the point where the head hair is. And you want to come up to the breastbone and then skim away. You want to go either side of the legs. But then from the throat area, come down and skim off the breastbone. Be very careful and gentle around that area. There's a lot of loose skin and you don't want to catch with the clippers. So it's a very, very light touch. Allow the clippers to work. And then I'll go into reverse with the same blade and go up into the throat area. 
just to clear out all that hair there. And it just helps shorten them up by taking just those extra few millimetres off. Let me just check where I've clipped. I'm going to go on to scissoring him now and I will start with the foundation which is the feet. I'm going to say everything works from the feet. Uh, my little quick tip about doing nice feet, especially for dogs that fidget when you go around their feet is to gently support the dog, just slightly part the coat on the foot and then do a V using the two toes, mid, two middle toes as your pivotal point and then if you just round that off Got a nice round foot, and then you can support the dog and just tidy any bits that overhang. We find this beneficial to a lot of breeds, especially Westies, because they're constantly flipping their feet up every time they feel the scissors on it. But supporting them that way, you can get a nice neat foot. I'm going to put my shape in with my chunkers just to see how much I can get away with taking off him. The last area I will do is a hock area because that gives you the angulation and the balance. So I will start with the side. Now the fallacy with chunk is people think you can do a full groom with them. And it's the, one of the reasons why they get damaged so very easily. They're only there for finishing or to put shape in on the ends. If you, if you see I'm working my way into the coat rather than grabbing a load of coat and working my way out, it's a sure way of damaging your, your chunkers. They're brilliant for coats like Alfie's. Alfie's got a very flyaway, thick but flyaway coat. And what you can start doing with these is start shaping the leg up, giving him nice angulation without making too many scissor marks. Always keep lifting the hair, checking for uneven areas. And I'll just do the inside of his leg now. They're particularly good for breeds like this for cross cutting because they don't leave too many marks. I always find gently supporting the opposite leg helps the dog to stay nice and steady. Good lad. You wanted to come out, clean the inside of the thigh, and then you wanted to come, it, come into a nice slope back into the foot. Good lad. Good boy. Stay there. Oh. To continue down the side of the leg into the foot. Good boy. And the same on the inside. Here, if you position yourself at the front. You can see hair that you need to remove. 
and lift all the hair up. You can use a finishing spray, something like a, a texturizing spray or a dog hair spray, just lift that hock hair up. Uh, it just makes it easier to scissor. But he's got quite a bit of body in there at the moment because he's just been freshly blow dried. You want to angle it in. I might use the curves for this. You want to angle it into the back of the pad. Just to make him look up on toes. It's so easy to go down the legs with a comb attachment, take them all one length. But trust me, your customers do notice the difference. The dog looking a little bit more sexy with nice curves and angles. Um, it's one of the reasons we're quite popular for our little teddy grooms. We do get a lot of clientele liking these longer cuts. Another good technique to get your clients into a routine. Alfie and his sister come every two weeks for a bath and a blow dry. Um, then we can obviously check over for knots and nails, ears, etc. And then every six weeks, every sort of third time, they come in for a, a full trim. And so we, we tend to charge about half of a grooming price for a bath and blow dry and a little tidy up. But it just really depends on the length of the coat. I mean, you can do as little as a third if they take you just a few minutes to get done. Good lad, he's done there. As you can see with my chunks, I'm building up the shape, just lifting the hair, seeing where it needs to come off more. Always stand back from your groom as well. Um, let the dog down for a couple of minutes, watch them move. And you can see any areas you need to take down shorter or blend in a little more. I'm going to move on to the skirt area now. Um, I always find going quite high on the tuck up, especially with these little crossbreeds or pets, gives them more of a, a waistline. Um, and the way I explain it to my students is think, think of a Nike tick where it starts at the chest, comes up and just goes into the tuck up. Um, any dog that's either slightly overweight or short on leg benefits from this angulation. Good boy, steady. Boy, there. So be careful of the skin. I've got my finger behind there so I know exactly where I'm cutting and go up and go down into the chest. Take a step back and what I want to do then is erase this sharp line. I want it to kind of taper into the body, follow the ribs round, uh, and I'll use my chunkers for that. So I'll just put it at an angle and then just soften the line. You can see how I'm just building the shape with the, the chunkers. And I'm going to use the same method as I use on the back foot where I feel for his two middle toes. And from that point, just do a wide V. And then just take the hair out from underneath. Good lad. And then take the point off. And I've got it in a gentle hold, he's almost giving me his paw rather than a death grip. Good boy. And I'll continue. Next stage we're going to do, 
I'm going to take the bulk of the off with my bulk of the hair off with my straights. Just watch that ear. Good boy, Alfie. Do you want to sit then? Sit. Good lad. Steady. Comb it all out. And I want to go in at an angle slightly, not straight up into the leg. It just gives them a bit more angulation. Good lad. Don't go too far back, you'll take the back of the leg off. So it's literally just what's on the side. And you can see it's taken the majority of the bulk off. Good lad. <laughs> Same again with the outside of the leg. From the point of elbow where you've blended in from, just go down. And now for the areas at the front of the leg and the side, I'm going to go back to my chunkers as I want to start moulding into the coat, getting the shape right. With straights, you'd take too much off and that's it. You won't be able to do that. So I'm just going to come in at the front of the leg and just bring that front leg further back, which helps shorten him down. So we get to the side, I want to... And then I'll move on to the outside of the leg. It's always important, especially with the legs and the chest area, to have the dog stacked correctly. Because if they're slouching, you take too much hair off and then they go back into the normal standing position, you'll find you've taken far too much hair off. So again with my chunkers, I'm just blending that line into the, from the side of the ribs into the leg. And then I'm coming behind the elbow. Good lad. <laughs> He's got a little bit of a bare area. He had a big mat there that we had to clip out. So I'm going to blend it in with my chunkers so it's less obvious. Now for the front angulation front leg angulation, I always put the angulation while the dog's standing on the table. I never lift up and cut across because of nine times out of ten you'll take too much hair off and it'll be missing from here. So I'll put my guideline in while the dog is standing and I'll look sideways and think what looks correct and then I'll put the line in and then I'll lift the leg up and clear what's underneath it. Good lad. <laughs> Good boy. There we go. You want it to almost be the same angle you went up at the hocks. Good lad, good lad. Then comb all the hair out and then I'll go back to my chunkers. Good lad. Way. And they just start shaping the hair up. Good lad. It's what we call up on toes. It just gives them that feeling rather than having slipper feet that the red just bring into action. They're alert. And the customers will notice the difference. 
and lift that leg up out of the way. Just check the insides, make sure there's no stragglers. to make a cylinder leg so I'm just going to make sure there's no angles, sharp angles or anything, I'm just rounding everything off. The chunks will leave a lovely soft natural finish. the other side off now and we're going to continue on to his chest. Just separate the legs slightly, comb it all out and what we want to do is bring from the breast of bone back into the line of skirt but just leave a little bit here just to give him a little bit of chest. So good lad. This is where chunkers are brilliant so you can mould in. You don't want it too exaggerated, just a nice roundness to the bottom of the chest. Remember to stack him correctly, because it all makes a difference and it's to the final finish. Good lad. And then face on, if you just, it's almost like a rounded V. You're just taking the ends off, just so it follows the skirt line. First thing I'll do is clear Alfie's eyes away. Good lad. Always keep the points of the scissors well away from the eyes, so I'm using half way down on my big scissors. Let's take the bulk away. And I'll get my thinners to get right into the corners and I'll go actually over the bridge of the nose, not down here, just, just where the corner of the eyes are. Good lad. You want to get this area as clean as possible. It's a number one complaint groomers get is that the hair's growing back too quickly into the eyes. Traditionally, the nose used to be the centre of a dog's face, so you'd have great big beards hanging down below, but most of the modern trims now tend to be the eyes at the centre. So I'm going to try and build up a bit of body with some spray there, but I'll start off by taking the bulk of this off underneath. I'll use my curve to start me off. Just make sure the hair, ear hair is out of the way. And comb it all the way down. And you're trimming almost from the flat of the nose there round into a semicircle, almost like a half moon shape. So start well behind the ears. And 
take it up towards the nose. Look how many excess hair that might be sticking out here. And then I will move the ear forward and continue that half moon around the side. Good lad. Good boy. Now that I've done both sides, I'm going to comb all the hair downwards and follow that shape round. Good lad. Good boy. And comb it forward. Steady, steady. Good boy. Good lad. When I do the fringe, always set the level I'm leaving it, the length I'm leaving it, and the angle I'm leaving it from the side. I look at the side and I make sure the point of the scissors are completely away from the eyes, just but bring them in at that angle and just have a look. And it's always best to take little by little off the fringe. If you take too much off in one go, they get a startled look where you'll see nothing but eyes. So, so gently. Just start taking the hair away from the front of the fringe. Don't go around to the sides, cut into the sides. You are literally just doing the visor at the moment. And then I'll tip the head down, comb all the hair back down to the neck, feel where the occipital point is, and then using a chunkers or thinners from the occipital point down to the neck, just blend the head in. Same goes on to the ear, you've got this hair, head hair that's separate from the ear hair, just ever so gently bring it round on top of the, to the point of top of ears there, just blend it into it. Good lad. Same the other side. I'm going to concentrate on the top of his head now but he's very, very flat, so I'm just going to use a little bit of texturising spray just to give it some hold and some lift. Obviously avoid the dog size, you don't want to get it into there. I'm going to start with my chunkers from the centre point of head, I'm coming down the sides of the face into the bangs. And same with the other side. Don't want to take anything off the top just yet. We just want to take the bulk off the, the sides off. Good lad. And then from the line you put in for the fringe, just bring it down to the side of the cheek just to blend it in.
lift the ears out of the way. I'm going to debulk underneath all this air here. But I'm coming in at an angle. Just to give that illusion of a round head. I'm going to go over the same areas with my thinners afterwards. I'm just going to get in the shape in with my, my chunkers. Uh, same on the other side, you know. Debulk all this hair here. Right, I've just gone round most of his face and just use my thinners just to blend in any areas, take any excess off, just to soften the look. I'm going to shortly move on to the top of his head. I left this till last because obviously it's the flattest part of hair on him so if you take it off first you'll have to correspond the rest of the head with with that so I'm going to use my texturizers to build a bit of body. A little bit of spray. Good lad. And I'm almost going into a, a point at the top first. I don't want to take anything off the very top. Boy. Oh, nearly there, little one. Nearly there. And then I'm just going to barely take anything off the top. Obviously, it's going to go flat back down again. I want to give an illusion that he's got a full head of hair. And chunkers help do that because they add a bit of texture to the coat rather than cutting cleanly. Good lad. I'm just going round all he's had to make sure there's no angles or sharp areas, just want it all to be rounded. Teddy all done now. And so he came in today and we bathed, blow dried him, a few little tangles, conditioned him, um, and then we just put him in a, a simple everyday salon teddy trim. Uh, about three quarters of an inch to an inch long on the body, a little bit flared legs, um, and most customers are very happy with a, a trim like this. Uh, just to mention, normally I would trim the ears round them off and the tail, take a little bit off that, but the owner loves it. Alfie Natural. Um, Alfie himself, like a lot of the breeds that we get similar to him, tend to come in every couple of weeks for a bath and blow dry. Uh, and we recommend to the owners a trimming of every six weeks. So he, he, he usually comes in two times, two weeks apart, and then the third time for a, for a full trim. Um, and anything you can sort of help with the customers at home maintenance wise is, uh, you know, regular brushing bring them in for an inexpensive bath and blow dry and it makes life a lot easier for the groomer and for the dog. Mm -hmm.